Brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to our next Wednesday hymn sing. Tonight, we are going to be looking at the six chief parts of the catechism through the hymnal, including a couple of hymns that have been written by Martin Luther. Uh, we'll be looking at confession, absolution, the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, baptism, uh, Holy Communion, looking at the six chief parts uh, this evening. And so, let's, uh, let's get right to it. We begin tonight in the name of our baptisms, which is one of the six chief parts. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first uh, part tonight is going to be confession and absolution. We're using a hymn of confession, hymn 610, Lord Jesus, Think on Me. The hymn that we're actually going to sing tonight is a uh, translation, not a direct, more a paraphrase, of a poem uh, written by Bishop Senesius of Cyrene, who is from North Africa, in 400 BC. So this hymn is exceptionally old, and yet it still rings true. I especially love verse 2. As we sing tonight, Lord Jesus, think on me by anxious thoughts oppressed. Uh, anxiety is something that we've all experienced at some point or another, and when we think about it, it's, it's not often because of the present moment, but it's about the past or the future. You might be anxious about your past and some sins that still grieve you, and you're worried they're going to catch up to you. You might be anxious about the future, especially with the election. Oh, no, what's going to happen if Trump or Biden? We get anxious about things we can't control. So we sing verse 2, by anxious thoughts oppressed, but it goes on, let me your loving servant be and taste your promised rest. We taste that promised rest every Sunday during confession, absolution, as we stand before God exposed, and yet completely loved and forgiven. So if you're anxious right now, I pray that this hymn brings you comfort as we look to God for his promised rest. We sing. As we continue to sing through the six chief uh, parts of the catechism, we join together singing a hymn about communion, about the Lord's Supper. Number 627 in your hymnal, Jesus Christ, our blessed Savior. This hymn was originally written in Latin by Jan Hus in the 14th century. Ordained into the priesthood and then earning for himself the title of Master of Theology, Hus vocally opposed the many abuses of the Roman church that he saw happening around him. 
Huss became a prominent and well-known leader of the Czech reforming movement a full hundred years before Martin Luther. His role as a reformer would see him exiled from Prague and his commitment to that reform would eventually lead him to be excommunicated and then renounced as a heretic by the churches at Prague and at Constance and then burned at the stake. We thank God for the life and the work of Jan Hus, and we know that Martin Luther did too. And some of the best evidence that we have of this comes from our hymn, which Luther liked so much that he translated it into German in 1524. This hymn is made up of ten verses, and today we will sing three, and they all highlight the beautiful mystery that is the sacrament of the altar. And we hear echoes of Luther's catechism, which was published only five years later. Jesus, by his bitter grief and woe, we sing, saved us from the evil foe. And even more, his pledge of love for us is undying. It's unending. Love shown to us in his holy supper. So in response to this love, we share it with our neighbor and we sing, Jesus Christ, our blessed Savior. Tim takes us from Holy Communion to the Lord's Prayer. Hymn 766, Our Father Who from Heaven Above, written by Martin Luther. Martin Luther was attempting uh, during his lifetime to put together hymns that would point to the six different chief parts, and this is one that he wrote for the Lord's Prayer in particular. Uh, And as we go through this hymn, each verse, of which there are nine, we're going to sing four of them, each verse starts with... uh, a, a, the part of the Lord's Prayer, but then goes on to explain it. So that as we sing this hymn, we're not only praying the Lord's Prayer, but we're also reviewing its meaning, reviewing the depths of the meaning of the prayer that Jesus gave to us. And one, I guess I'd be remiss if I didn't do this, the one I want to focus on is verse one. Our Father who from heaven above bids all of us to live in love as members of one family and pray to you in unity. Teach us no thoughtless words to say, but from our inmost hearts to pray. And Obviously, maybe it's just too easy. It's like a softball. You just want to take a swing at it. Uh, With the election and everything that's been happening in the past few days and months leading up to it, I would encourage all of us to remember that our greatest source of unity is not politics, but those who call on God as Father. 
If you look at the electoral college map and all the different counties and the urban areas and the rural areas, and you see this massive divide in our country, but in the church, there is none. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, it doesn't matter. Whether you're red or blue, an elephant or a donkey, we call God Father. And so do a lot of Republicans, and so do a lot of Democrats, and there is our unity. That we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Calling on God as our Father, we say at the end, Amen, as a family with one voice. So going back to the anxiety, as we cast our anxiety on Jesus, let us turn our eyes to God the Father and sing and pray and review the beauty and the depth of this prayer, the Lord's Prayer, with 766, our Father who from heaven above. As we move from the Lord's Prayer to the Ten Commandments, we sing another hymn of Luther's, number 581, These Are the Holy Ten Commands. Luther's commitment to and passion for catechesis, Christian education, is pretty evident. Still to this day, in Lutheran churches all across the world, in fact, in this Lutheran church here this evening, Young people will be taught the faith from Luther's small catechism. Luther had another commitment, though. 
another passion that might not be quite as evident, and that commitment and that passion was music. Luther published his small catechism in 1529, but before he set himself to the task of writing the catechism, he saw it as more important to write catechetical hymns, six of them to be exact, one for each of the six chief parts of the faith, and five of those were published even before his catechism. And why? Why was Luther so committed and passionate about music? Because music helps us learn. Through repetition and through singing, we commit words to memory, and they become a part of us. That was Luther's intention on, in writing our hymn uh, in 1524, if you were wondering. This hymn on the Ten Commandments. Twelve verses, one for each of the commandments with an introduction and a conclusion, each verse teaching about God's word and about his law. So today, in an effort to be lifelong students of God's word and his law, we sing, these are the Holy Ten Commands. Our next hymn now turns to holy baptism, and it does so by pointing not only to our own baptisms, but to Christ's. The hymn is 404, Jesus Once with Sinners Number, an incredible melody, just a flowing, beautiful hymn. But I love in verse 3, we're going to sing three of the four verses. In verse 3 it says, this the baptism that our Savior greatly longed to undergo, this the crimson cleansing needed so the world God's love might know. It's actually a reference back to Jesus' words in Luke chapter 12. At this point, Jesus had already been baptized in the Jordan, which is what verse 1 speaks to. But in verse 3, we turn our attention to a second baptism. A baptism that he has to be baptized with. It comes in Luke chapter 12, pointing ahead to the resurrection. This crimson cleansing that we all need. And that's why we have hope. That's why baptisms are one of the most important things we do, because in that moment, that crimson cleaning is given to us that extends all the way to our deaths and even then beyond. The love of God that promises that he'll never let us go. We see it in Christ's baptism, which points the way to our baptism, 
in which we are given the robes of Christ's righteousness. We can hear from Luther's explanation in this text. We can hear from the prayer that we pray that he's sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin, this prayer that's still in our baptismal liturgy. So as we consider Jesus' baptism and our own, our, our faith is rekindled, and we know for certain that we have hope. Let us sing hymn 404. final hymn this afternoon, our final hymn singing from the catechism is a creedal hymn, number 953, we all believe in one true God. And what better way could there be to end our afternoon of catechism hymns than by joining our voices together and confessing our faith? Written by Tobias Klausnitzer in the 17th century, this hymn finds itself in the very back of the hymnal. This is liturgical music. It's one of two creedal hymns found in the Lutheran service book. Luther wrote a hymn based on the Nicene Creed, and Klausnitzer wrote this hymn based on the Apostles' Creed. And here we confess our faith in and we sing praises to our triune God. God the Father who created us. God the Son who redeemed us. God the Holy Spirit who sustains and comforts us. Klausnitzer did not hold it as a secret that his hymn was heavily based on the text of Martin Luther's catechism. But in this case, it was Martin Luther's large catechism. Well, we don't have time to dissect Luther's entire large catechism, but I do think that these words from it succinctly and beautifully sum up Luther's faith and Klausnitzer's faith and our faith. 
Luther writes, Thus we learn from this article that none of us has of himself, nor can preserve his life, nor anything that is here enumerated, or can be enumerated, however small and unimportant a thing it might be. For all is comprehended in the word creator. All that we have in this life and in eternity is given to us as a gift by the triune God. To him we sing. We, we all believe in one true God. sung hymns based on Luther's catechism, even some hymns written by Luther. Today, we end by praying one of Luther's collects, a favorite of mine. Let us pray. Dearest God and Lord, strengthen and uphold us in your pure, precious word through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and help us to show and live our thanks with our fruits of faith to your praise and thanks forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen.